Hey, good morning, Herman. Late January twenty. That's yeah. right. Uh, thanks for joining everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, let's give it another couple of minutes and I'll see if more folks join. But uh, in the meantime, uh, you can see that I shared the meeting notes. So please add yourself as an attendee. Uh, Ricardo, uh, this is Ron. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, good morning. Happy New Year's. Um, yeah. That link, at least, uh, I'm sorry to say this. I'm embarrassed. I'm on my phone, and um, I don't see anywhere to sign in on that document. Uh, it shows, like, January 25th. I don't see anything for today's meeting regarding attendees. Just uh, I think you need to scroll down a little bit to Jan 11th. Uh, all right, maybe I'm just not seeing it. All right. I'm sure it's user error, but yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong year. That's why. Oh, wrong year. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, I was like man, I'm really that. late. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Salt. No worries. Awesome. I think we can get started. Uh, maybe we'll do a quick round of introductions, you know, just quickly what you want to see or what you want to talk about maybe today and in the future within the working group. And um, I think this round of introductions will be just maybe for the next meeting or, or this meeting and the next. And then after that, we can probably dive into some of the things that we need to talk about so uh, so we can actually use the time uh, with more things that we need to address all right so I'll, I'll just go first I'm Ricardo I'm a attack run, runtime co-chair I've been with attack runtime about four years I'm working with the CNCF for maybe four more like six years we're involved with the CNCF for over six years, and yeah, and I'm here to um, make progress on the cloud native AI uh, white paper, and also talk about what we want to do with the landscape. We want to create a landscape for for cloud native AI. 
Uh, Wamin? Yeah, thank you. So my name is Huamin Chen uh, from Red Hat. I started with uh, Kubernetes many years ago, and uh, ever since the joined a number of CNCF projects. So the goal I'm jo joined in the artificial intelligence uh, working group is to uh, get a sense of uh, sustainable AI specifically. And for these projects, I you know we have a number of uh, initiatives over there. Uh, so for the meeting, I just want to you know get the white paper going and hopefully can work with you in the future as well. Thank you. Uh, Ron? Good morning, all. My name is Ron Petty. I'm with RxM. Uh, also a long time user of Kubernetes, been involved with the creation of the, the various certifications and things like, like that. Um, and for here, I'm looking forward to really seeing how the landscape pans out, um, really just help see if I can assist uh, organize these efforts and just be more involved. That's it. Happy New Year's. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, Cassandra? I'm Cassandra. I'm a student in college taking a computer science degree. And I've also taught kids workshops at CNCF Kids Day for the past three times. And for next CNCF Kids Day, I plan on doing some AI for the kids, the kids book. That's great. Awesome. Welcome again. Uh, Adele? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. Finally, I unmuted myself. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Adel Zaluk. I'm a product manager uh, for OpenShift at Red Hat. Um, I've been a long time Kubernetes user and developer myself, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to collaborate and explore new opportunities in this uh, landscape. And yeah, looking forward to working with you all. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Kathy. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kathy Zhang. Um, I'm a member of the CNCF TOC. I'm also the TOC sponsor for um, for this uh, work group. Um, so I yeah, I'm interested in you know seeing how we can you know um you know we work together to you know to understand the challenges or the missing functionalities of the cloud native uh, infrastructure or cloud native technology to support the AI workload and how we can, you know, as a working group, we can facilitate, you know, um, the development of solutions or either it's existing solution or new solutions to help fill those functionality gaps and also to help, you know, um, yeah, improve, you know, either the performance or the reduce the cost of, you know, the AI um, workloads running on the cloud. Awesome, thank you, Kathy. Uh, Victor? Yeah, Victor Liu, uh, I'm an independent consultant interested in AI slash security and edge computing. I was glad to be here. Welcome, yeah, Rajas. Hey, hi everyone. I am one of the tech leads for Tag Runtime and mostly involved in uh, everything tag on time was in working groups uh special purpose working groups so on and so forth but mostly uh spe specifically regarding uh, artificial intelligence i'm much more interested in this space in terms of how cloud native can help ai as well as how ai can be used for cloud native i'm looking forward to like, contributing to the white paper as well so that's why i'm here uh nice to see so many people around there and welcome everyone Welcome. Glad to see you here too. Uh, Sertak? Hello. Um, I'm the uh, engineering manager for the upstream security team at Microsoft. Um, I'm also a maintainer for several uh, CNC projects like the OPA Gatekeeper, Eraser, Copa. Um, and then I uh, worked with some of the AI tools in the past. I'm like the author of the QCTL AI and AI Kit and a few other projects. I'm um, looking forward to uh, collaboration, learning, and uh, contrib contributing if I can. Thank you, Sertak. Welcome. And finally, Andre. Yeah, everyone. Uh, I'm Andre uh, from Notebooks team at Apple. 
and I'm part of Qflow community. I've uh, been there for almost six years, mostly contributed to training operators and automobile components called Katib. But basically for my six years in the community, I've been like involved in almost all of the projects there. So we contributed a few of the pieces in the white paper. We would love to discuss this on the today's call. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so I think I have a added a item on the agenda. The first first time uh, first item. Um, basically, we're gonna have a a panel, the KubeCon, uh, the Colo event. Um, this is already finalized, and uh, this is gonna be talking about cloud native AI. So you know, check it out. I'm, I'm gonna be on one of the panelists. Uh, we got Kathy on the call. Rajas also on the call. Um, but yeah, so uh, check it out. And if you have any questions or anything that uh, you think are good uh, to ask uh, in the panel, just feel free to reach out to any of us and, and we can add it to the panel. Any comments on this and for anybody on the call? Looking forward. Awesome. Uh, yeah, right. cool Ricardo, just wondering. So it will be like part of Colo the event, right? So yeah, this is an Colo event. The uh, schedules actually went out yesterday, uh, and the the main event uh, still in the works. So the schedule's not out yet. So there might be some other content in the in the main event related to. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of AI, but yeah, but um, there might be some more specific content related to the working group too. So it's not like the CI day, right? Yeah, yes. Sorry. Like I remember previously in the KubeCon, I have the Kubernetes AI day, right? And HPC day. So it's slightly different, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's a slightly, oh no, it, this is, this is the same as HPC, right? Uh, Rajas, or is it a different one? Yeah. So uh, this time we have cloud native AI day as the co-located event. So I'm one of the co-chairs for this. Uh, so it's all things to do with like cloud native and AI. So that's what we have. And there's also a KubeFlow summit also happening as a co-located event. So there are like a couple of these events which are like AI centric. And I'm sure all the other events will have some or the other AI thing theme going on as well. But yeah, this this is more around the cloud native AI issue. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I really try to to attend this uh, session live. Uh, <laughs> hope to see you soon. Very exciting. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, cool. And the next um, item on the agenda is obviously the one of the main things that we've been talking about, which is the white paper discussion. So I think uh, anybody has any suggestions, just bring it up. Uh, but uh, what I'm thinking now is just kind of go through some of these comments and and resolve them. And if you have anything that you'd like to add, we can actually add up maybe a bullet point or we'll, we can change some of these things that, that are on the white paper, but if there's something new, we can add a bullet point and then we can actually elaborate on, on that specific item. I know that we also wanted to get to a point where we finalize this. So hopefully I'm thinking maybe in the next, uh, within this meeting and the next meeting, we can hopefully finalize uh, what we want to, uh, sent to as a, as a final draft to the CNCF staff. So I don't know exactly what the process is. I'm, so I'm, I'm kind of new to this. So, so I'm thinking that the process is uh, sending the draft that we have to the CNCF staff and they'll review it and see what, what can be uh, posted on the CNCF uh, website. So yeah, I can help with that. Yeah. Okay, okay, great, great. Okay, cool. So um, maybe, okay, so let's look at this comment. Um, so we have Ron on the call. So normally if Ron, uh, we use cloud native. Uh, cloud native, should this be normalized? I think this is a comment whether we should use cloud native with the dash or not with the dash. I've seen it like in so many different ways. So I'm not really sure which one is the right way. Anybody has any comments on this? I, I mean, this is Ron. Um, I would say with a hyphen, it's more of a adjective form than a than a noun, <laughs> right or pronoun. Uh, you know, so I'm not. I, but to be clear, I am not a grammar expert. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm think, I think I think I think this might be solved by the 
the cloud native staff once we send this over to to them, right? So they can use I, it. I, I like that. They'll be definitely more picky. So yes. Yeah. I, I would say my, my immediate response would be how has it been used in other white papers that has been already approved? Uh, probably that is the correct or the high confidence way of, of, of saying correctness or judging correctness. Cloud native with a dash, I mean. I, I know, I, I, so I, as uh, you know, I don't know what's the actual right way, but I would reference other published white papers in the CNCF, yeah. and then yeah. that just, just use whatever is in, in there. Makes sense. Yeah, so. All right. All right, so. Let's go to, I mean, we have an inter interaction here. I think it's all kind of looks good. Um, does anybody has any additional comments? Yeah, feel free to uh, comment here. Um, and we have, you know, minor. Uh, actually, R Ricardo, can I can I just say, ask one thing before you scroll too far down? Um, sure. The, the landscape, I know it's not there. Um, there's no chance that the landscape would be there before this is published, right? I think we uh, we haven't started it with that, right? So, uh, yeah, so we could get started with that. We've been working on this in the last few meetings on the white paper. I mean, so we haven't right. really worked right. on the landscape. So, so if we were going to get the landscape, um, say like before KubeCon, we would have to get started around, right? So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess just just to sum up my point, it's um, just as for any of the content here, the the more we can tie it back to cloud native projects the better <laughs> or artifacts right there's a lot of stuff in here about the history and of you know mlai and that's that's all great um i just think at some point um given the nature of the paper i think anything we could do to tie it back the better so that that's my only comment yeah and and there's a cloud native landscape v2 and i'm not really sure if it's actually been released yet so i think uh we can follow up on the uh Slack channel and and check with maybe Chris Anichek and, and see if uh, they made progress on that and we can actually see if we can integrate the cloud native AI uh, landscape within that within the V two version of the landscape. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. I'll show. It. Yeah, I think probably we can include a link to that landscape. Let's check with Chris first. Yeah, to see how that goes, that version two. And then we can, if yeah. in our white paper, there's a need, yeah, to reference the landscape. So let's do that. Yeah, let's let's do that after this meeting. And, and then we can determine, maybe in the next meeting, we can take a look at that and see if we can make progress on that, right? Um, and so maybe we'll have something ready by a KubeCon, but, you know, there's no guarantee, right? So it depends on how many people want to work on it and you know, what type of effort. Maybe it's very simple to integrate, uh, but I think one of the important things is that we, we actually have to pick the different areas, right? Like the the different tile areas and then within different tile areas, we, we need to actually put the projects or, or the different initiatives. Well, even, right. even, without, even without the AI integration, it probably might be worth referring to it because most of the projects are going to be non- ML AI stuff anyway, right? To to actually host this stuff, you're going to be using Kubernetes, right? So, it, yeah, it's uh, it wouldn't hurt to just get I think something to be in there to to make sure people realize where this stuff's coming from. Makes sense. So I, I my one suggestion is after this meeting we can start a doc with the different high level areas that or categories that we want to put in the landscape, right? So. That, that way we can tie these cloud native projects to AI, right? So in specific areas. So let community members come up with the different categories and we can discuss which ones uh, we want to include or remove and basically work, uh, work through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I like that idea. Yeah, let's, you know, define the categories and then let's see which part it fall into which category. Yeah, yeah, we can't test the link here. 
Because because I, I think yeah, Ron, you you saying a lot of these cloud native projects don't specifically tie to uh, AI, but but you know yeah, part of the work in, in the landscape is making them tie to some area of AI and how they can be used. Right? Yeah, that's the ultimate tie-in. But yeah, just even more to the point, this doesn't happen without Kubernetes, right? So it would it doesn't hurt us to mention it, right? We mentioned CNNs and you know rags and whatever, right? But but. I don't think that's the spirit of the paper, right? It's the it's the combinations of these things. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think we can move on uh, to the next comment. Let's just run to. Uh, I feel there is a disconnect between the earlier supervised versus generative. It might help to mention these technologies. Uh, fall into one or both camps. I, I think that got resolved with uh I think Ryan and and others did some updates. So that one might be good with talking about like declarative versus generative kind of a rewording of things. Okay. Ryan Taylor. Okay. Does that make sense, uh, Ronald? Can we mark this as result? Yeah, I think so. It, yeah, I read it again yesterday and this morning. It looks it looks good. All right, Thanks. cool. I don't have permissions to resolve this guy, so I think it, this is um, Alex. He owns his doc, so he's not on the call today. But we'll let him. Yeah, he'll take a look at this later. Okay, so Ryan has his comment here. Uh, may want to consider a different example here. DALI is a diffusion model believed to use the stable diffusion pipeline for which the primary mechanism enabling the technology is latent denoising diffusion rather than the particular choice of vision architecture. Okay. Yeah, now. so the, 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 the that change the spirit was is they're not related right and so what what is related right and cnn's kind of led to some other innovations like denoising but they're not directly related per se and yeah so system wise like which one like we mentioned we have a whole thing on cnn's but we don't actually say what software uses cnn's right like google photos or you know things like that and so just trying to i actually looked around so someone else has a suggestion probably be fitting here i I actually am not sure other than SaaS based services that are, you know, popular using uh, CNNs. So other than maybe like TensorFlow, but um, yeah, we hadn't mentioned that yet. So, so maybe I, uh, so I have a question, maybe uh, I, I can't find the hand for now. Uh, so I'll just ask if that's okay. Um, uh, so I don't see us mentioning RNN, which, you know, are the version of, uh, neural networks that are usually used for, you know, uh, memory and, and attention mechanisms, which are basically what transformers are relying on. Is it worth mentioning RNNs in addition? Because CNNs is usually like for image, it's you know for image processing and mm -hmm. uh, and and other maybe modalities, but for text, I think RNNs uh, it would be worth a while. Maybe if if we're doing that descriptive introduction i think it would make sense in my opinion to have something in there uh and sorry i haven't haven't had the chance to review this in detail because i as, as i read now and i'm trying to read in parallel i am realizing that okay i'm going to put a comment here so so reading Maybe. Yeah, that that comment fits right in. I think, and that's exactly the discussion here with the CNN versus using versus RN. So, yeah, it was probably can be redone a little. Yeah. Um, but we don't. I, I would also guess we don't want to get too um, scholarly. You know, Wikipedia. Here's all the things, but it's but we do probably need to get it right <laughs> at least on the view. Yeah, end. I. I mean, we we definitely. I, I think there's merits in, in, in images and other modalities, but I think we're dealing with text and attention mechanisms most. So, I, yeah, if if we're trying to put an introduction, yeah, I think I think it would make sense to mention it. At least that's what I think. All right, Adele, I'm gonna add you here. 
Would you like to add that? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll add that. You can just comment or I think you already did it. Yeah, that's all, uh, that's all good. Do you have a link to the this document? I just want to make sure that you, I mean. Yes, you know. yes, let me, let me, uh, I'm actually reading it now. Uh, so I'll, yeah, I think yeah, I'm reading it now. I'm paragraph. Yeah, so right. I'm, I'm there already. I have, uh, I have it awesome. opened. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, this is the Ron. This is the same comment, I guess, right? So, or this is a different. Okay, Dolly. There's a Dolly comment. Okay, yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next comment. This is a repeat of two par paragraphs prior. So there was a mention of transformers. Or just, oh, so you're saying Transformers is, uh, well, does that anybody understand what this is? I don't, I don't see the repeat basically. I think that, so yeah, the, since they're mentioning the self-attention or the Transformers paper, the, the published in 2017. Uh, this is two paragraphs prior, but, uh, but I don't see it, but I'll I'll just say I think it. it's the second sentence of two paragraphs prior. It says AI to where it's today are convolutional neural networks and transformers. Oh this guy, yeah, yeah. I this might be fixed. I think it's I mean those two next paragraphs expand upon that statement in that, that top paragraph. This may exactly. not be an issue. Yeah. I think I think this is from before. Um, we can ping Boris and see what he says. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. So let's see. All right. So moving on to the next comment. This is just a space here. Uh, I mean, I just need a reference for this statement. HCI is not necessarily cloud native, and I'm not aware of a general practice of AI on HCI other than other than from NVIDIA. Uh, uh, comment on this? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so I think this is a um, going to be a very interesting statement because we are not going to make a standards uh, or just an industrial-wise definition of what is a HCI or cloud-native HCI. Um, so in this context, we would rather, I would suggest we would rather avoid make such a definition or just a reference without the industrial or industrial industrial-wise recognition for what is that, uh, you know, cloud-native uh, HCI with regard to AI ML. Yeah, but Alex actually is saying that I'm trying to explain that HCI is not necessarily optimal for AI ML training, but HCI is very common in cloud native. Okay, got it. But I mean, I don't see. Do, do you want to change this uh, comment, or do you want or this paragraph? I would rather just uh, drop this definition of H, uh, HCI from the sentence. I mean, it makes sense to have the um, specialized or customized the hardware or just uh, environments for AML based on cloud native technologies. But when we say hyper converged, it's going to be something that we have to think twice. Okay, so so no, that's a. Well, group purposes for marketing, but I don't think uh, as a white paper for you know um, CNCF consortium to support that some marketing associations. Got it. So, how how does this sound? Recommendation is to remove HCI altogether. Okay. Yeah. 
Anybody has any comments about this? Or I mean, this might be just a specific topic that Juan and Alex are I get familiar with, but then, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it makes sense. I, I was trying to follow the statement and how HCR came to the flow of the uh, sentence, and I I was failing miserably. So I think it yeah, I think it would make sense to to not have that mentioned here at least maybe later if that is something someone wants to put in the discussion because I would like as a as just a reader to this I I fail to see how it fits. Okay. Sounds good. All right. And that a paragraph. Okay, well, I mean, there's another one here from I mean this section needs significant work to present what is currently soda or cloud native uh, infrastructure and challenges. I suggest we gather inputs from CNCF tax working groups to make it up to date. They review vendor practices, production system from OpenAI, and re recent pretty based presentation on KubeCon AI Day. Yeah, so and, that was uh, made, uh, that comments were made uh, before the white paper gets into a greater shape as we see it nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. So I still want to guess the other tags because uh, I believe the store, uh, for example, the storage tag has promised to sh uh, share their ex uh, <coughs> the tag expertise here uh, to help us understand what is the uh, advanced in storage and potentially other areas that can help us understand the, um, the uh, cloud native technology stacks and applications with regard to AIML. Uh, mm -hmm. We probably have not guessed them working on this paper. Uh, we have just pinned the storage tag, see if they can you know, spend time on this one. Sounds good. Uh, so I'm adding you uh, um, as yeah. a contact to to contact tag uh, storage. Okay. Um, so hopefully can we can contact them in the next two weeks so that we can make progress. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I think there's a comment from Kathy to uh, also. We can work out the definition of cloud native in this section to bring everyone on the same page. We can probably divide this into, this is a really old comment. I don't know if this is already result, uh, Kathy. Is this a result? Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, I, I think this is, uh, let me see. Yeah, I think it's a result. Now we divide it, right? Um, two different, at least in the description I see it's divided, yeah. I'm gonna mark this as a result. Okay, thank you. Uh, this one from Sam Peter. I guess it's not on the call, but uh, cloud native can benefit for development scenarios. Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook as service as a service and well utilize uh, the GPU accelerator by GPU slicing on demand occupation or over commitment. Uh, number two, auto ML for hyperparameter tuning. Kubernetes job parallel with intelligent scheduling technology can save many effort for scientists. Do you want to, Alice, do you want to craft this into a follow up paragraph? So Peter is not here, so. Okay. Um, I think, uh, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think these are, uh, I, I like the little bit Peter's comments, you know, I think they are very good. We should add that in. Um, so Alex, is Alex, uh, uh, Alex is not online, right? That's not no, right. He's, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe we, uh, right. um, paragraph. yeah, we can pull that, yeah. Yeah, maybe I can just uh, organize a special meeting uh, for their time zones, so we can just, I uh, guess, they are in the same meeting, we can sync up. Yeah. Well, we can add this as a follow up, that a follow up um, paragraph to here. Yeah, we can also follow up on Slack. Yeah. Complete. Awesome. So, okay, so we have challenges here. There's a Challenges, challenges, and gaps. 
So Andre, you actually had a comment here. I don't know if you added this on the last meeting or Yeah, I think we added a few things there. So specifically for scheduling and for um user simplicity. So can we mark this as resolved or there's something yeah, else? Yeah, I think this could be resolved. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Actually for the performance, yeah. So do you see like um I does anyone see I have any, you know, um feedback on the challenges, you know, for the performance. You see like, you know, it's, it runs slow or you know, it's not tra either training or inference. You feel for example for inference, do you see that, you know, um when you want to train the when you want to in do the inference, um, it's kind of slow. Or if there's a lot of traffic, you, you need to scale out. But that can be scalability, part of the scalability too. It's not fast enough, something like that. Yeah, I think we need to follow up with Jeremy also on this. So he said that he's going to add some more things. Um, I think there's a rephrase here, so I think we, we need to. Yeah, I would say. Sorry for interrupting. I would say like performance scalability could go under same kind of category, but maybe Jeremy has different thoughts here. So you're saying like scalability and performance here or something like that, like right here, something like that or not? Maybe yeah. Uh, I, I would think? say yeah. Go ahead. No, what, what do you think? Like, I would this... say you know because like the scheduling also will impact performance, right? So. Uh, scalability, yeah, as performance, and also like orchestration scheduling also will impact the if it's not scheduled well to the you know proper nodes or proper GPUs, the performance will be impacted too. So I'm just wondering, maybe it's still worth to call it out. Um, yeah, I, I'm open to suggestion how we should organize this, but I think performance actually, they are. I feel there are pain points there, right? But maybe I'm separate, doing, you, separate you, points, right? Please yeah. talk about. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Maybe for uh, Andre, for Kubeflow, do you see a lot of the um, like uh, uh, training workload as well in Kubeflow? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. training. Yeah, we're using the the Kubernetes cluster resources for this. So you're asking about like the their performance on the on the Kubernetes clusters or yeah yeah my impression is the kill flow definitely is you know for for inference definitely it will be the way to go for 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 training which does a lot of a lot of data movements that could cause uh, performance issues uh, so maybe kill flow already have a lot a list of uh, uh, challenges related to training yeah i think it's a good question let me just follow up on this like because like on the networking side we didn't see any like real problems like because the basically like using the PyTorch native technologies right to do a distributed training right how they share like the uh, the model weights right between the the workers and they underneath they're using RPC protocol right um, to share uh, data uh, so as long as like you have the appropriate bandwidth between your Kubernetes pods everything should be working but maybe there is more here uh, that we can add um, that's great. Yeah. 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 If you in the from Kubeflow, if you see any challenges, I think you know yeah, yeah, sure. add here all those challenges. Could be networking, yeah, could be data set movement, or could be, you know, the, the, the compute or storage. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. So I think like yeah, the, the biggest problem, like as you mentioned, like about the, the, the data movement, right? Like specifically from big data to training. And we spoke, I think, about it before, like we We've been struggling for using big data like from Spark and then maybe using this within PyTorch and we've been working to see how we can simplify this. And, uh, and this is like right now the huge gap in our industry basically and Qflow doesn't solve it today. So how you can basically feed your data from Spark to training on the distributed workloads, right? Uh, so this is the one thing that probably I can maybe edit somewhere, but this is more about, um, yeah, I don't know if you can add it to the performance. <laughs> Because well, you, the normal is, yeah. You can, you can add it as an example. Yeah, you can okay. you can add here and then we will see. Yeah, yeah just yeah. add, just when you, yeah, I think from Kubeflow perspective, and, you know, any pain points, you feel, yeah, it could be just add here, later we can reorganize them. So that would be very helpful, you add all the pain points. 
same thing yeah. on the database side. I'm a database guy. So vector database, um, there is a challenges to leverage a, a GPU to uh, run vector um, databases. So um, so it's that yeah. So that that's a problem um, because mo there there are solutions uh, already. You know, but, uh, but most of them use CPU. So uh, and the data movement is the biggest problem. Mm. Is that is that being used a lot? The vector databases and GPUs. No, I mean, I, well, from what I heard, like the vector database uh, problem was not like the hardest problem <laughs> in 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 AI. So because you know a lot of these uh, databases are already implementing vector features, um, but the, they were not actually having like major. Yeah, they're, they're they're traditional databases <clears throat> like re relational database implementing the vector uh, database feature, um, and most those will be for sure running on CPU most likely. Um, they're new, mostly non no SQL databases that's uh, you know running as a vector database. Even those uh, have trouble. Um, uh, you know, you, it depends actually. Is those it, it possible using GPU uh, in a, in a batch mode? Uh, but but traditional relational database doesn't take, use GP, GPU very effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Victor. Yeah. You can. Could you also add that to this paragraph? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to ask if mentioning and it's also there in all the comments mentioning uh uh era would be a dynamics resource allocation would be a good part of each other from a training perspective and if so i can like contribute to that section as well yeah right. so right. yeah uh, sorry go ahead Katie. yeah i just want to say yeah go ahead sorry Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just like it's a good point about the scheduling. Like we added like about the unicorn queue and the volcano support there because like it's very important how you basically orchestrate the training workloads. Uh, so if you believe we can like move these sections, I think it's fine. Uh, but we already had this uh, down it. All right. Sorry, I didn't catch. Uh, add what section or remove which section? Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, the, the the question was about like dynamic allocation and advanced scheduling, right? The array, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you scroll down to orchestration slash scheduling, uh, we just mentioned the the this challenges about GPU um, management, right? And um, basically, the advanced scheduling um, um, technologies could help us, uh, especially for AI ML workloads. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, I, I like this section you added. Okay, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And maybe also like the cost efficiency, but we can discuss it later. Like, uh, but so because like the the fractionization fraction, fractionization of GPUs basically, right? So, I think this is also like that we might need to address, to be honest, uh, because there is some existing open source technologies like NVIDIA Meek. Uh, but they're mostly like, um, um, so they're mostly like a time slicing technologies. So they're not like physical slicing of GPUs. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love to like, you know, like to work together to see how we can improve this. Um, so I think if there's a physical slicing, that would be much better, right? Yeah. 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 Isolation. Okay. Exactly. So yes, yeah, so, so some of the, some of the like public cloud providers has like some, maybe some technologies that you can use, but probably I, I'm not aware of any open source um, um, systems that you can use to yeah to, to utilize it I do think you know if that I can offer training you need you know uh, many multiple GPUs maybe across node or across physical servers you think you know the um, if there's a, like a, you know this communication between the different nodes the GPU communication um, that could also impact the performance do you think? Is that a challenge? Is that a problem? Networking you're talking about? Yeah, I think involving the networking or the communication between the GPUs across the node. GPU communication across the node, right? If you, yeah, if those communication is not efficient, you know, um, like this, or congested or whatever. Yeah, they for sure. Impact. Yeah. Because for training, you need not just one GPU. That's very different from inference. 
is the other extreme. You need many GPUs, right? So for inference, you probably need a fractional of a GPU. But for training, you need you know many GPUs across nodes. Do you think that that could so, be a challenge or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing is, like, you can run your training on part of GPU, right? So it is possible to somehow use one GPU for multiple, like, PyTorch workers, for example, right? Um, because it really depends on how you define your device ID within the, within the PyTorch. Um, so about the network latency, uh, maybe we can elaborate a little bit, like, what exactly do you mean, Katie, here? Um, but between the between the workers or between the, uh, the I mean, between the workers, yeah, between the if you have like you need like for example ten GPUs right for your mm -hmm. to run your training, um, to run your LM training, just make mm -hmm. it up. And these ten GPUs are located on different, suppose on different servers, different nodes, right? Yep. Yep. Then the if there are communication, you know, if the scheduler is not doing a great job of allocating the GPUs, then the, the communication path between the GPU that could post uh, some performance bottleneck. Is that the situation? Yeah, or so the, the thing is like you don't really communicate within the GPUs within the workers, right? So mm -hmm. like for example, like how PyTorch like works, right? Like it's just using, I believe, RPC to share like the, the gradients between like to synchronize the gradients and distribute. So basically distribute the model and then distribute the data set, right? And when you do your training, you basically share some data between the workers to uh, to have like the final output of your model, right? Um, so for for this type of training, right, we have like the separate. Like, if we're not speaking about fractionalized GPU, right, we're speaking about one GPU per worker, right? Which means like if the if, if the worker has an available GPU, mm -hmm. it will be used in the specific like VM, right? It won't like share like the, the network between the GPU. Um, go ahead, Cassandra. Yeah, sorry. Um, would it be relevant to add a section on education for kids with AI? Because I'm working with CNCF Kids Day a lot, and I'm writing a new kids workshop, which will teach the kids AI. And I'm also writing a new kids picture book, which will also teach AI concepts to kids, which is also related to the CNCF and funded by them. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, we can add a different section. Uh, feel free to add it, I would say, and some... I could uh, just add it at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe we can discuss it in the next meeting. Right? Okay, thank you. Yep. So, thank you. Sorry, I, I think we went off track a little bit. Or, but, uh, you know, just, Kathy, I wanted to capture what you were actually asking here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I'm okay. So, so my question is, okay, is there a, you know, um, how to say it, um, when, when you allocate, uh, training workloads, right, from a cloud native perspective or in cloud native infrastructure perspective, when you allocate a training workload, um, when the scheduler, suppose scheduler allocate, uh, the, uh, several GPUs for your training workload, uh, if those GPUs, um, uh, are shared is that a shared uh, between uh, a share is one if the GPUs are shared um, by like you know um, multiple by two workloads two AI workloads there could be an impact of the you know the the the, the traffic not just the GPU resource but also the traffic the communication network communication traffic between the GPUs I'm not sure whether that's the case or you have dedicated no sharing. Yeah, Andres, you're you're saying that you, you don't. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, 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 I think Torch doesn't doesn't actually run into uh, those issues, or. I think I got your point, Katie. Like, for example, like if you want to like use GPU for like so. So the thing is, like, uh, so from the Qflow perspective, right? The the single worker is a single Kubernetes pod, right? You cannot share like resources across two two Kubernetes pods, right? Like you basically allocate the physical resource on the pod because the pod is just a VM, right? Uh, so the thing is like. Uh, for your point, yes, it is possible to use one GPU, uh, like basically fractionize it, right, per per the process, right, uh, and then like um, put some processes on the queue, unless this GPU will be available, right, like this slice of GPU, right, or this time slice of GPU. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I didn't do an investigation of this, but you can think about this. Uh, but in general, like it's very new to the Kubernetes and like overall ecosystem, right? Um, like all of the fraction, like all of the things, how we can slice it and support it, like schedule it for the PyTorch training. Uh, these things, we, I think we should address basically. Um, Would you say that most of the Kubeflow use cases are inferencing rather than versus training? So there are several things, right? So we have like uh, folks for running training operator in production to train their like large models, right? We have the case of product project, right? Which is right now in the independent GitHub work. So KSurf is for online inference and Kubernetes training operator for distributed training, KTIP for hyperparam tuning, um, and pipelines for pipelines, right? So we have like independent microservice for every step of ML life cycle today and notebooks as well. Um, so we kind of like separate it. Um, but the use case is quite different because right now, because of the boom of generative AI, right? Most of the people do online inference, right? Because not many people actually train models today, especially from scratch, right? They do basically fine tuning uh, because of the amount of resources required for large models, right? Uh, but the inference right now is the most popular thing that many people just try to, to do, right? An interesting observation because of the availability of a foundation model, uh, Kubeflow yeah. actually become more sort of a um, use more, actually, more use cases instead of because people don't have to build their own model anymore from scratch. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah, it's a good point, Victor. I think like we recently started a discussion around how we can, so we have a base kind of like the, uh, like infrastructure that we can use, which build on of Kubernetes to train the models, but we don't have any good kind of like experience around fine tuning, right? Because from the, from a training perspective, right, you just take your foundation model, you just do additional training using hiking phase transformers or whatever you want to do, and then just you get the results, right, on your custom data set. So we're working right now with the community to see how we can integrate this LLM APIs with fine tuning to Kubeflow seamlessly. So basically data science do not need to, you know, like um, worrying about images or working about infrastructure complexity. And I mentioned this in this doc as well, around the user usage simplicity. Um, so there is a huge effort in the community right now how to streamline this process for specifically data scientists and the people who are familiar with PyTorch but not with Kubernetes ecosystem. Paper might be good actually to separate the inferencing from training, emphasizing yeah. Kubernetes is is really the the best place for inferencing already, and the, of course challenges to be resolved on the on the on the training part. Yeah, and it's a, it's also a good point. Yes, I agree. I, I think like uh, from our perspective, this also should be like an independent microservice. Like you you should do inference as a separate microservice. You should do training as a separate microservice. You should connect these pieces together, but you shouldn't like combine everything within one cluster, um, because like different like inference and training requires different kind of um, um, functionality, right? Um, and yeah, resource location. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Maybe if, when we talk about the challenges, we can, you know, you know, separate, you know, the challenges for inference and challenges for training. So maybe different. Uh, should we just add a section at the bottom? Because see, maybe we have this kind of general challenges, but we also have maybe, maybe we should add a section of training and inferencing specific things. Uh, we also, I don't think we want this to be like super, super long either, right? Uh, which section is it super, super long? The security one? Oh, oh. No, because I think, I mean, if, if we if we add like a challenges for training and challenges oh. for inferencing, so then we will have like a, you know, challenges for performance training or challenges for performance or inference performance, right? And inference scalability, um, then we'll have uh, training scalability, right? Or sustainability, we have all these sections for training and inferencing. And, and I'm wondering if we actually just need us, you know, sections at the bottom that you kind of pointing out like different different specific challenges with training and inferencing, right? All we can, yeah, all we can do is, you know, we have like say, training challenges and then on the training challenges, we can have, you know, performance, you know, uh, you know, um, like you Sorry, know, security, sir. et cetera, right? You can move around. And then we have the uh, reference challenges, for example, like scalability, um, you know, scheduling 
Uh, I just make it up, right? If we can reorganize on um, this one, you know, a yeah. bigger section is training challenges and then scheduling and the, sorry, inference challenges. Yeah, under each section, right? What we think are the challenges. So we can move something, you know, if we think it's related to training, we move there. If one challenge, for example, um, the scheduling is, if it's related to two, both training and the uh, um, inference, we can put inside the two section. Does that? I, I think so sorry um i think the problem is like it's not only training and inference in in ml uh, and ml ops life cycle today right so should we be too granular here because like do we need to speak about feature preparation data extraction i mean um uh hyper tuning right uh so there are a lot of steps in the ml ops journey right and i don't know if we need to like think Dive. about to see from which perspective of this <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 what I'm trying to get to, right? So, like, do we want to like dive so deep, or do we just kind of want to yeah. make it more general, right? So, and then and then maybe, you know, if you want to tackle those specific challenges, you know, some some group or certain type of people that are interested in that challenge, and they can tackle that challenge. Right? For for me, well, another another yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for me, I was thinking that uh, we just we want to emphasize that, uh, like, like especially in the Kubeflow's case, um, I mean, r really, because people why Kubernetes and AI, why why do they put those two together, right? That's because of uh, you know inferencing workload is already the best place to to run inferencing, right? For microservices, uh, for training, there are a lot of challenges. Whether it's on uh, Kubernetes or not, there are some challenges. So so that's I just pro probably just under performance even just say just just performance section have a just just explain that you know why Kubernetes is good for inferencing and in in, in Kubeflow's case is already uh, there and then maybe it's add some challenges when you run uh, you know training and and of course all the data preparations like Andrew was saying. Okay. Yeah. Or we can put the, the, this challenge inside each section. If inside each section, for example, for scheduling, for scaling, or for performance, if we want to, you know, divide, I mean, separate them, that's fine. Yeah. You can do that way too. Well, I put the name down there for me. Yeah, we can add it. Okay, makes sense. Um, that's, we have uh, three more minutes, so I think we can probably just go through the rest of the comments real quickly. Uh, I just kind of wanted to also uh, mention that we have uh, our next meeting in two weeks. So within that time frame, before this, uh, before the next meeting, uh, I would encourage uh, folks on the call here to ping other members that are mentioned here on this white paper to, you know, come up with an answer, a paragraph or whatever they're looking for so that, you know, when we meet the next time we have more content and, and we we're getting closer to, you know, finalizing the white paper. Does it make sense? Yes. Yes, uh, Ricardo. I remember there's a, a presentation of a AI project to um, uh, type runtime. Um, I forgot what's the project name. I think of two weeks ago or ago. Or you posted that. Um, what is that project name? You know this uh, presented to tech runtime. You know which I was talking about. I'm thinking we, we may want to invite them to this meeting too, or to this um, white paper. So to get their input. Okay, uh, that's the. Um... Oh here, yeah. it's Ray. It's Ray, yeah, Ray, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would you okay. like to reach out, or would you like uh, me to reach out to them? I I can reach out to them. Okay, I... that sounds great. So I'll reach out to yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... You can ask them to come to provide input to the uh, yeah. to this white paper especially the challenges. Perfect. Okay, so we have one more minute, so we don't have time for all this stuff. Uh, I mean, there's some other uh, you know, names uh, attached here. So if you 
already commented and your name is there, so you can just hit resolve and yes, sir. Uh, Ricardo, can I make a small, just a quick point? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just like asking. So because we added like a few sections about reference, um, um, what is it? If you scroll down. So reference yeah, I think it was implementation. Your, yeah, yeah, reference implementation. Just want yes. to hear your thoughts on this. Anybody on the call? Yeah, so I added this. So uh, probably this morning, or I created it last night and then added it this morning. So. I just want folks to kind of give some thoughts and opinions on this overall topic. I'm happy to develop this paragraph further or add more content here. But the idea here is that like you know, we have quite a few tools out there in the open source world that are not really well combined today. And you know, and maybe one of the goals in the long term for the community should be to create some reference implementation of using these tools together, easily being able to deploy it via Terraform on any of the major cloud providers, you know, on top of Kubernetes and have like a good kind of user and product experience for folks to be able to do some interesting machine learning quickly. So, you know, I think having spent a lot of time with the Kubeflow folks, I think there are quite a few powerful tools there or going into the Kubeflow ecosystem that we could probably stitch together. We have like a huge, like um, interest on the Jupyter Lab side too. We do a lot with Jupyter Lab, so I think giving folks like kind of a code spaces type view of what the ML world looks like. Maybe something that's really interesting to kind of tie all these different subjects and topics together into something more empirical that folks could use, you know? Yeah, so I agree with that. And I think um, we can probably focus on finishing this white paper and and then maybe we can maybe write down a potential reference implementation because we, we won't know exactly what that implementation is until we actually do it. And I think it it, it would actually take some work to validate that implementation. Uh, what are some of the thoughts here for, for some of the folks on the call? I think that's a good strategy. So it'll take a... I think a lot of work to, you know, come up with something like, oh, you, you know, you can use Kubeflow, you can use Trino, Spark, um, Flow, or any of these projects, and uh, you can use them in this way together to come up with some ML or uh, ML ops pipeline per se. And uh, yeah. but we need to validate that too, right? So in some way, I mean, we we could use uh, industry validation too, but we'll have to reach out to to different members communities that have actually validated it yeah, i would suggest that using the title like uh, implementation stories instead of a reference uh, implementation because the reference uh, has certain mean a uh, certain bearings of uh, like a uh, standards so and um, stories is just a uh, end users own implementation it does not have to have this uh, enforcing uh, meaning of uh, becomes a reference yeah. yeah i think i agree with that because reference means some standard, um, because if we do this, if we uh, were not inclusive, some other companies may not be, you know, um, it's not good. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. implementation, what, what kind of implementation, which area we should cover? We need to think about that. Yeah, it's pretty wide. I mean, there's, there's a lot of pieces, right? So that's also a challenge. Um, but yeah, I like the stories that- yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go for go for. You finish, Richard. I was gonna. I was just gonna quickly respond to you. I think like the fact that there are so many, that's kind of part of the problem. I think that giving folks some opinionated view of these set of technologies or things that are we find that are useful to work together and provide value, that I think would be really useful to the for the broader world, right? Um, but I know it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. So, yeah, yeah, I think case studies or stories are, I think, a good way to put it. Uh, also, the CNCF has this, um, uh, you know, charter that says we're not kingmakers, right? So we're not actually providing like a architecture that should be used by everybody, right? So, so the idea is just to kind of you know show how people are using all these different technologies in different ways, 
And I think, uh, you know, by looking at customers or, or end users, not when I guess customers more if you are a for-profit type of organization, but, but end users uh, are using all of these and uh, write it down as a case study or, 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 or a document and that can be useful for other folks in, in the industry. That makes sense, huh? I'm happy to discuss, discuss it further too. I know folks need to drop now. Yep. Sounds good. All right, so uh, any last minute things? And just a reminder, two weeks from now, we have our next meeting and we can follow up on Slack on any items and feel, don't forget to ping the folks and that have actually our mission on, on the white paper on, on this draft. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so Thank much, you. Ricardo, for organizing and yeah. coordinating all no this. Thank you. No worries. Bye.